once again in the Hollywood Hills of Los Angeles, California. And today what we're going to be doing is going into the specific changes. Very, very specific. Really drilling down the how-to, the specifics of when your inner psychology is just maxed out. And the basic idea here is, and this is really continuation from yesterday, that most people come from a paradigm of either you have it or you don't. They call that the have paradigm. It's like you either have it or you don't. You know, either you're born a celebrity or you're not, or you're born a rich kid or you're not. You're born good looking or you're not, or you know, you're born smart or you're not. You won the lottery or you didn't, right? You have the have paradigm. Then you have what's called the doing paradigm. The doing paradigm is where you have to do the thing to make it work. Maybe you don't have. Maybe you're not one of the blessed people, but, and this is a quick review before we get into it, but you can do the right thing. You could maybe find a loophole, right? Often with the doing paradigm, it's about finding some kind of a loophole so that you could kind of do something so that even though you suck because you don't have the things, you find that loophole. And lastly, we have the being paradigm. And that's where you're just being that high level person. It's who you're being. And this is fun. This is kind of a funny thing. I'm sitting here at 41. How old are you? 32. 32 years old. So I can remember I was 22 years old and I just done some public speaking for Eben Pagan. And I was up there like, I'm 22. I'm super nervous. I know Eben, I think, was spending about 20 million a year on cold traffic at that point. And so I was super duper nervous being out in the public. And I'm just in there and I'm like, I've got to be this like guru character. I mean, I don't know if I fixed this, but you know, I'm like, I got to be this guru character. And, and I did my best job that I could. And it really helped the business actually. You know, he got me a lot of exposure, super appreciative. But he calls me on the phone. He says, Owen, stop doing, start being. And at this point, I literally thought, why is this guy like manipulating me? Why is he trying to trick me? How could you just be? What does that even mean that you could just, that you could just be? Like, I I'm, I'm kind of a loser. I'm doing this thing on stage to not be a loser. I go out and try to meet people and do things to not be a loser. So how would I just be it? And unfortunately, he just, he, he, he's one of my great mentors, great mentor for Julian, but he wasn't at that time able to sort of sit me down and kind of take me through every little change that would happen if I was being. He didn't take me through those changes, okay? So in this video, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to explain to you what those changes look like so that you can understand them is really our goal here. Let me say another thing too. If you like what we're gonna be teaching you here, go right now to julianmentoring.com. Just go right now. And believe it or not, while COVID is on, what we do is instead of doing free tours, we, we normally travel the whole world and we come and we meet you live, but we can't do that right now. We can say hi to you on live. What's up? Say hi to you guys on live right now, but we can't meet you live. So we've set up a free phone system, completely free, where we do one-on-one -on -one consult calls. Now we do this, of course, as a win-win because you win no matter what. It'll be a great call no matter what. Go to Julian Mentoring. You'll be very happy you did. It's a great call. But also, we do it because a lot of people who wind up doing the call wind up taking mentoring, and then that's a win for us as well. So it's a win-win. But either way, everybody who does the call winds up feeling closer to the team, closer to the content, because what I like about it is that it makes it real. Right now, you might be watching at home. Like, let me ask you guys an honest question. Are you watching this at home right now and it feels like a couple kind of quirky characters on the internet are talking to you and it doesn't feel fully real? Let me know that right now. I'm gonna read this in the comments. Tell me if this doesn't feel totally real to you sometimes. That's actually one of the big benefits of the, of the call, okay? One of the big benefits. Does this ever feel like me and, me and Julian are like these weird cartoon characters? Not that we're not, but does it feel that we're only these weird cartoon characters you could never meet us or talk to us? Does it ever feel that way? Let me know in the comments. I'll read some of the funny comments about it, okay? And so the point of something like julianmentoring.com, fill out that little form, you'll get a phone call and it makes it real because you're talking to someone from our team. And if you wind up, yeah, someone says two gods, two legends, yes, yes. right? You know, really we're cartoon characters more than anything. AI says, yep, it doesn't feel real at all. Uh, Michael Carney, he says, yes. Uh, he says it feels real, but yes, quirky characters. David Nacho says it feels real sometimes. Another guy says it, it says both, bro. Another guy says watching too. We got, we got great fans here. Right. Kings, gods, we better do a good job today. Oh geez, thank you guys. But let's not just have it where you're watching us, okay? And somebody even said here, Jeremy actually said funny enough when I saw it in real life, that didn't even feel real. Well, look, the point is we want to do our best. I love that, but we want to do best to make it more real to you. So go to julianmentoring.com, fill out that little form, do the call, 
no matter what, when you do that call, you're going to love the call. You're going to learn a lot on the call. It's an educational call. It'll bring you more within our culture. But also, if you love the call, maybe you'll even decide you want to wind up doing mentoring. Could you, before we jump in this, could you briefly explain what mentoring is, the accountability, the mastermind, talking to you directly, and then we're going to jump in this content. Yeah, the mentoring is eight weeks where I take you by the hand and take you through the levels of transformation. You've probably seen me talk about this in many videos. There's apathy, grief, fear, anger, and then it shifts to courage, desire, purpose, and love. And there's accountability where every single week there's different missions that you have to execute on and report back on to myself and my coaches, and we support you through that. There's 24 seven access to us in a private Facebook group. There's two live support calls every single week on Zoom where it's not like this, we're just reading just some comments. I see you and you can talk to me directly and I answer your questions. I make sure you're interpreting the material correctly because that's one of the biggest mistakes and problems with most traditional digital programs is you watch them, you misinterpret it, you misapply it, and no one's there to correct you. And then you just keep digging yourself down the wrong hole. Down the wrong tunnel. <laughs> and you gotta walk back up. Yeah, no, it's terrible, right? Like you'd think the digital course would be good enough, but people just misinterpret it, they screw it up, and of course they don't get results if they mess it up. So in the mentoring, it's really that situation where success is inevitable. No matter who you are, whether you're afraid, whether you lack motivation, whether you've procrastinated on many programs in the past, the mentoring, the way it's set up, I've spent a lot of time perfecting this, is really that environment where you cannot fail. So once more, julianmentoring.com, go fill it out right now receive the free call and if it makes sense i would love to work with you now one more thing i also want to request here is fill this out and under this video at the end when you watch this in the comments not in the chat but in the comments post your biggest takeaway or biggest realization we're about to get deep here okay this really allows you to lock in internalize everything you've heard but allows us to also see what you resonate with and learn more about you which allows us to of course tailor future content to meet your needs. So at the end, or even during, in the comments, not in the chat, in the comments, post your biggest takeaway, okay? And once more, also just a quick recap here, um, understanding these paradigms of having, doing, being, okay? The approach that most people take is they'll try to do to have in order to be. And the big lesson that we broke down in yesterday's live is it has to start with the being. The being is what affects the doing and then the having. Okay, it's not do, have, be, it's be, do, have. Okay, and in this video, we're gonna really explore what it means, because the being does sound pretty vague. Like, what does that mean, being? Okay, so we're gonna take you through that, what that feels like, what that really means, and how that really affects everything that comes from it. Yeah, and guys, as we lock in this, we're gonna be going pretty deep right now. I just wanna say one last thing, because there's a less, what you just heard about Julian's mentoring is a lesson in and of itself. We were so frustrated when we couldn't do seminars for a while when this lockdown happened, and we thought, man, this sucks because we love talking to you live. But then what we did was, and this is a lesson for you, is we made lemons out of lemonade, and we perfected the online mentoring. What happens is that people all over the world who might not even be able to make it into one of our events actually wind up learning from us directly. There were so many people when Julian did mentoring, I'd be on mentoring with Julian, and they're like, oh, this is so cool. I would normally have not even gotten to learn directly from you, Julian, and now I'm learning directly from you. And also, it gave us literally a year to iterate and perfect the mentoring. So, you know, I mean, it's always a, a, the next iteration, the next, but it's just been getting so good. So that another lesson there is that what you just saw us talk about here, the mentoring and what we've built, the fact that we built A, a free call, because remember, if you go to julianmentoring.com right now, you get a free call. A, we worked on that. Then we worked on perfecting the mentoring and we wound up meeting all these new people from all over the world that we might have not even been able to meet. So if you're at home and you want to maximize, you know, whether it's lockdown or whatever it is for you, you want to maximize that time, definitely julianmentoring.com, smartest thing you can do in your life. Look, we have grown the business during lockdown. This is a major thing to notice. We've also grown our skills during lockdown. We've gotten better during lockdown. We've gotten healthier during lockdown. Everything during lockdown is better. So big lesson there when you hear Julian talking about his mentoring is keep in mind, make lemons out of lemonade. Everything that's happened, you should be making more money. Look, end of the day, when hard things happen, you're always gonna make more money in my experience because it forces you to think more deeply. It forces you to do things you wouldn't have done. Look, we never would have even been set, created this whole live setup 
yeah. if it weren't for the fact of lockdown. So there's a lot of amazing things that have happened during lockdown. And a great thing that you could do now to kick off that process is go to julianmentoring.com, fill out that quick form, do it now, okay? Like, we're gonna get in this in a sec, but just, just load up the window now, do it now, submit the quick form, and do that free call no matter what you do, you're gonna learn a lot on that free call. Let me just add one thing too, <laughs> what you said. But we're about to go to the content, okay. okay. We're, we're gonna get into it, but no, key audit there, okay, as you said, like we've grown in all areas during this whole situation, audit what you've done. And guess what, for the most part, people are stuck in limbo just waiting, right? Waiting for things to go back to normal, waiting for this to all be over. For the longest time, people were waiting for 2021. Things will change and they're still waiting. A big difference between people who fail and people who succeed is people who succeed immediately adapt to that reality. Life doesn't stop, okay? Sure, if you look around you, a lot of people pause their lives. Don't let that be you. Although it seems like life is on pause, it isn't. Audit. This past year, did you grow? Are you still moving? Is your life continuing? Are you adapting? And if the answer is no, then definitely apply for the mentoring. And remember too, even jumping on the free call, this is about you. You know, you, we, we jokingly said, you know, let us know how it feels about us. And everyone's like, gods, kings, you know, amazing beings. And I agree, but this is about you. This isn't some show where you're like, let me watch them. That's really the you, greatness being yeah. projected onto us. Yeah, you're projecting you it onto your you. Greatness. And I know, and I'm saying this because me way back in the day, extremely shy, anxious. Again, you've probably heard this story, like way back in 2006 when I first started working on myself, couldn't even ask someone for the time or anything. If there was an opportunity like that, like, hey, you can get a free call, I would be too scared to jump on. I'm like, you know what? I would just rather kind of watch the videos or if there was a course, I'd rather get the digital course so no one really talks to me because then I wouldn't be forced to change and grow. I wouldn't be the hero. I could still say the passive little spectator on the side. Don't let that be you. This is about you. It's not about us. What you're watching here, sure, it can be entertaining and fun and educational, but remember, you're the hero. Take this, apply it to your life, jump on the free call, ask us questions, ask my team questions, apply what they tell you. If it makes sense, of course, join the mentoring, but if not, apply what they tell you. And remember, this is about you, your life. Take action on it. This is not just entertainment. This should be and is life-changing. Yeah, so we're gonna crack into it now. And by the way, regarding the calls, look, if you, if you can't get yourself to do a free, simple thing like this with free value given right. to you, you gotta be honest with yourself about it. Are you really gonna live your dreams? So this is a litmus test right now that you're ready to step up. Okay, so what we did was we're gonna be going a lot deeper today on this <laughs> having the have or have, I, having which we call the have or have not paradigm, doing and being. So. Like we said, you usually come to come into this thinking, oh, you know, only people that win the lottery can get rich or people who inherited the money can get rich or people who, you know, are good looking can be successful or whatever it is, right? Or, or get away, away from even get rich. I'd say live your dreams, okay? So live your dreams, whatever that is for you. Could involve money, could involve anything. Now, going from there, we go into the doing paradigm. And usually what you're looking for is some kind of a loophole. This is where things that you've read, where people are not talking about a deep identity level change, but instead what they're doing is they're talking about a tip or a trick, some kind of loophole in the system. So you'll see this in marketing. I want you to think about the marketing that you've seen where maybe you're watching things like, like the car, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians. Oh, it's, you know, or things like royalty, like say the British monarchy. Now, I remember being a kid thinking, how weird is it that the British monarchy is so popular? And look, I love that. I think it's really cool that they have an audience. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, I appreciate, I'm not a hater on anybody. So, you know, if the Kardashians or the British monarchy have an audience, that's great. I love that. But I can also recognize that I'm not, like, like while I'm happy they have an audience and I think we should be happy for them, we should appreciate them. I'm not someone who sits there thinking, okay, I'm gonna follow the, you know, the escapades of Prince William and Kim Kardashian because they're the haves and I'm the have not. I'm not gonna sit there scratching a lottery ticket hoping that that pans out. I'm not gonna sit there looking for some secret little loophole or even worse yet, even worse yet I think, I'm not gonna sit there looking for some kind of some kind of reason to give myself an excuse for not winning. And I think that last one could even be the most important. Like, at its core, the have or have not paradigm, victim thinking, saying that, that if you're not Kim Kardashian, you couldn't do it, right? All of our, all of our dreams to be Kim Kardashian. If, by saying that, really, it's giving yourself an out. And look, if you're in so much apathy and your life sucks that bad and you just need an out, hey, fair enough. 
fair enough for you. It's just, it, you're overwhelmed with pressure. You're beating yourself up. You're, you're, you're making yourself feel bad. And, it, and it's going to make, it's going to, you know, I don't want you to like jump off a building or some crazy thing. I want you to have a long life. I want you to be happy. So if you got to tell yourself it's not your fault as a way to kind of get through the day, you know, not just like jump off a building or something crazy. Hey, say to yourself, it's not your fault because hey, you know, maybe it's not in truth, you know, maybe it's not, who knows, right? So, you know, maybe it's someone else's fault. I don't know. But the point is, once you feel stable enough to start to take responsibility, that's where the doing comes in. That's where you say to yourself, I can take control. Write this down, write in the comment, now, now, write in the comment, I can take control. I can take action. I can take massive action. Write that down to hammer that in your brain. We're gonna go beyond it, but write that down your, just right now, write in the comments. I can take control, I can do this, I can take action. I know it's dorky. I know I'm telling you to write into a live thing, okay? But I want you actively participating here. Unfortunately, if you lay back and listen and you're not active in participation, if you're watching this after, if you're seeing this even after the broadcast, go right in the comments and put, I can take control. I can take massive action. I can reach my dreams. I know it's dorky, but again, we get you to do this because if you don't, yes, I love seeing these comments flooding in because if you don't, then what happens, you're just laying back watching, you're not hammering it. So that's like a simple thing that and, you can do. And for do. everyone here too, like we see your comments. So definitely comment. If you ever see us look up a little bit, there's a huge screen here. We're reading through all of them at the same time. So definitely comment. Yep. Wayne Wayne says, I can take control. LOL says, I can take action. Zap Factor says, I can take control, okay? By the way, remember that also, if you're writing this, be sure to fill out the application for julianmentoring.com as well, okay? Seeing yourself doing this, see how good it feels to take action? Think how good you're gonna feel when you fill out that application, julianmentoring.com. Also be active and do that as well. You have that phone call, it'll make it more real to you and it'll connect you more deeply to the content. Amazing move, great free call, great consultation. Now, going from there, we wanna take action, we wanna do things, we wanna own our problems. That's the doing. The problem is, like we mentioned yesterday, sometimes what happens is that when you come from the have or have not paradigm, you get addicted to the doing because unless you're always doing something, you feel like you're that loser again. Julian mentioned this yesterday in yesterday's live. He said it's like a shark. The shark feels like it always needs to be swimming or it dies. Now look, sometimes that can be a good thing. I don't want you to get apathetic. I don't want you to sit there just like being a loser in life and not taking action. So, you know, that shark analogy could be used for good or bad. It could be used for good in the sense of like, hey, live an active life. Don't just like retire from life. Be active, be energized, enjoy life, swim, be who you're meant to be. Who you're meant to be should take action. But it can also be that you don't feel confident, you don't feel good enough, you feel flawed and inher an inherent sense of shame if you're not taking that action. The problem is, and this is as we said it yesterday, is that you need that foundation that you are good enough, that you are enough, that you deserve self-love, that you're a child of God, that you have worth regardless. Could you sort of reiterate that and we'll go on some of the points here? Yeah, I mean- Quick reiteration from yesterday. The best- way to see this or the best example to really illustrate this and this is where we notice it ourselves is in social interactions right like someone in a social interaction who doesn't feel confident there's massive obsession with looks and money right it's like oh i'm just not good looking enough i don't have the money i don't have what it takes so on and so forth right that's the majority of society it's you know what i would talk to more people i'd put myself out there but the looks and money you know poor little me victim around looks and money but then it gets more subtle right then it gets into the doing. And people think that they can present themselves to be a certain way, to be high value, to be enough just by saying certain things or doing certain things, right? And this is once more, looking for the little tricks, right? It's like, well, if that person who actually has it handled on a solid foundation says this, if I say it, then uh, they're gonna think that I'm like that person, right? But no, people can sense it immediately, okay? It's beneath the actions, that's the being, and this is what we're gonna talk about here. And once more, this is a lot harder to put into words because it's pre-verbal, okay? So key, an example I've given for years, um, especially that illustrates social interactions, is linking it to music, right? Like, you could listen to a song, and there's that soul, there's that feel behind it, where you're like, wow, this is a genius piece of work. And then, you could give someone the exact same, you could say, notes to play, but that person just doesn't have the soul. They're playing the exact same notes. They're doing the exact same thing, yet something's a little bit off. 
And that's the problem with the doing. You think that it will make you seem this way, but people can see it's this compensation, something's a little bit off, and once more, the being, the soul, colors the action, it colors the doing, and people will read right through you, okay? And this is where you see people who are very try hard, it comes off as very insecure, yet when someone who has the being in check, who comes at it from this place of, you know what, I'm good enough, I'm whole, I got this, they don't attach their self-worth to any kind of action or thing, their results suddenly change. It's just very, very different, and that soul is there. Okay, so once more, key lesson from yesterday, don't focus on the having, it doesn't start there. Don't focus on the doing, it doesn't start there. Start with the being, and from there, and this is the spiritual trap, don't just stay in the being, like, okay, I'm just doing it. It's like, no, from there, yes, do, yes, have, but the being comes first. That is the foundation. It all starts there. And once more, it's hard to put into words because it's pre-verbal, and this is why a lot of people just don't know about this. And it's also very different in terms of how you work on the being. And we're gonna cover all of this, but it's not as straightforward. It's not as, here's a little tip. It's a lot more nuanced and simply due to the way that we've been conditioned, especially nowadays with social media, everything is so watered down, so dumbed down that people might even hear advice like that and they're like, you know what, this is just, too complicated, I'm too tired, it's too much, uh, no. Okay, so right now, lock in, we're gonna go really deep down the rabbit hole, explore what the being really is, what that looks like, what that feels like, and how to work on it directly. And if you can't lock in for this, if you're like, I just want the little tip, this is too deep, then perhaps give up, right? Perhaps jump off, go to TikTok, have fun, and, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's your night, that's right? That's your day, that's the answer. But if you want real results, if you've tried all these different things, the doing, and it's simply not working, you're not getting the results you want, then the answer is in the being. Yeah, and think of it like, imagine that you're gonna, I don't know, let's say you met someone new and you wanna go and get to know them better, and you invite them on this trip to Hawaii, and you're like, I'm gonna take you to, like I know we just met, but I'm gonna take you to Hawaii, I'm gonna take you for five-star dinner, I'm gonna get out a horse and carriage, and that's a lot of doing, and then the person who you're doing this with is like, well, why are they so desperate? What, what do they need from me? And so you do all these things, but they look at it like you're a loser, like you're needing something. Versus if you actually just feel good about yourself, say, hey, you know, maybe, you know, come over, watch a little bit of Netflix and we'll order a pizza. And then, you know, they're like, wow, I love the movie that you picked. Oh, the pizza was great. Because it's coming from somebody who at their core is centered. So we're trying to show you this, and this can help you in every area, whether or not it's just your enjoyment of life, but it could also just be in your general social skills, getting a promotion at work, making new friends, anything with, you know, getting to know someone on a really deep level, who knows how that could be. You see our point here, okay? So it has a lot of different applications. Now, the first thing I'm gonna get you to do is I'm gonna get you to admit to yourself that right now you struggle with this concept of being. And I don't mean to be mean about it, but I know this is true. And here's how I know. In yesterday's live, we asked you guys, what are some of the areas where you feel like you blew it? Some of your rock bottom areas, areas that you tried too hard, and you had a lot of information about that. But when we asked you questions about the being aspect, we'd be looking up on the screen and there was really, really few responses. And what that showed me, and it was, it, it was like, on one level, I was disappointed because I was like, wow, I wish more people got this. But on another level, it made me excited because it makes me feel like we can really take you to another level here. So we're gonna show you a really cool paradigm that's gonna take you to another level. So that aspect of it excited me. But basically what it is is that we know that you probably struggle with this. Now, if you do, here's what I'm gonna do. Now, we said that the first paradigm is the have or have not paradigm, having paradigm, next is doing, and next is being. Really, it's the opposite, right? Down here is having, have not, then doing, then being. And we're trying to get you to kind of flip that and start with the being. And then, and then you go from, from that same foundation of, of being, then you go into doing, and then you go into having. But you see the point, we're flipping it. Now, rather than forcing you to try to envision the being paradigm and say, you know, to shame you subtly and say, you should just be there. How come you don't just get it? What could be wrong with you? Almost how I felt when I felt manipulated when I was younger. You know, when I was told that amazing advice. What I'm gonna get you to do is I want you to imagine, remember the have or have not paradigm? Just go in your body and imagine that you have everything. Go in your body and imagine that you look your perfect way you'd want to look. Maybe you wish you were taller. Maybe you wish you had a beard like mine. Really do this, by the way. Like, close True. your eyes right now and like sink into this. Like, what it feels like. Okay, this isn't some fun. Like, eh, what would it feel like? Like, really let this land. Okay, this is how you connect with the being. Remember, it's pre-verbal. Logically, it's like okay, this being thing. This is how you get it. If you're like, what's the being? Do this. Okay, so once more, close your eyes. You wanna guide him through? Yep. 
Close your eyes right now and imagine that you have the exact looks that you want. Imagine you had a beard like mine, sudden glasses like Julian's, a head of hair like Jeffy. Imagine, you know, imagine that you had the perfect sense of humor. So imagine, okay, from the having paradigm, imagine you had all the money, whatever amount of money you want, whatever big fat mansion or crib that you want, whatever that would be. Imagine you had a private jet. Imagine that you had the best clothing. Imagine that you had the best education. Imagine that you had all the friends and people backing you up. So you have all the things you want. Whatever that would be, the voice, the accent, whatever it would be. You have everything. Now imagine that you're doing everything perfect. Imagine that you are doing the perfect conversation. You're, you're exhibiting the best sense of humor. Imagine that you are completely smooth and savvy and suave and you're accomplishing things and you're in your peak and you're in your flow and you're doing everything. Imagine everybody's loving you and cheering you on in every joke that you said. Imagine we're doing this on the night that a 43 year old man just won his seventh Super Bowl. Imagine that you are just Tom Brady. Okay, just imagine you're Tom Brady, okay? Just you got yourself. Quiet, yeah. Tom Brady, you're now Tom Brady. <laughs> Who wrote that? Somebody wrote that. Dick Smith wrote that. He said, imagine you're Tom, you're Tom Brady, right? So, <laughs> okay, so imagine, some guy wrote, imagine that you were well endowed. So you see the main point. So imagine that you're Tom Brady. <laughs> it's like the news, it's called the, now that he won the seventh Super Bowl, he just it's called the Tom Brady, the Tom Brady exercise. Imagine you're Tom Brady. Okay, imagine you have everything that you want. Imagine that you're Giselle and you have Tom Brady, okay? So imagine, you know, if you're a woman watching. So whatever it is, right? Or if you're a guy and you like Tom. So whatever it is, Imagine that you have it, you're doing it, you're, you know, everything. Now, imagine right now how easy it would be to be that person that you want to be. Because you've got it all. Okay, imagine that literally you went right now to julianmentoring.com and you filled out that entire little form and you knew that a phone call was coming and you felt so good about yourself because rather than just watching and being passive, you went and filled out mentoring.com and actually set up a quick call and took advantage of lockdown. Imagine you did that, okay? Imagine that you're Tom Brady and you went to julianmentoring.com and you filled it out because you realize that no matter how many Super Bowls you win, you gotta learn to enjoy life and you wanna release some trauma. You see the point that we're talking about here? There's always that space for growth. That's what we wanna get to you right here. So here's my point. You've got it all, okay? Everything's going amazing. Everything's beautiful. It's so perfect. How would this change the way that you're coming across? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill down now on all the different ways that you come across. But then what we're gonna do as we drill down on the way that you're coming across, if you had all those things, just imagine you had all those things and you're doing all those things, the changes that you're gonna make in your physiology, the changes that you're gonna make in your focus, the changes that you're gonna make in the way that you feel, imagine that you have all of that, imagine you're doing all of that, well, now all of a sudden you're being that person, but then what if you just started that now? What if all these changes that you made, what if you just started now? What if you just started now? And that's our point that you could reverse it, okay? That's what Julian's always trying to hammer to you in his teaching. So we made a list, okay? Because sometimes we can be very ranty, of course, myself particularly, very ranty, be a little bit all over the place. So we, we actually laid this out to you in a list. Like if you see like the back shot right now, if you put the camera in the back shot, I don't know if you can see it. There's like this big fat list right there on the ground, okay? So we've, we've literally written out a list and just by rote, we're going to begin to read this out to you, okay? So the very first one is audit the emotions and thoughts. That, you know, you've got everything, you're doing everything perfect. Audit the emotions and thoughts. First one is how much anxiety do you have? Yeah. So gonna really, once these, more, gonna read these out. eyes still closed, okay, sink into this. You have everything, you're doing everything, right? That thing you believe like, if only I had that, if only I did, like you have it. You're now that person. What changes versus the old you and this new you, or you could say the original you that actually is good enough, that actually is whole, right? So how much anxiety is there? How much are you retreating in your head, stuck in your head, micromanaging everything versus simply being present? You can audit it right now on a day-to-day -day basis, walking down the street, at home in your head, or says, you know what, I'm good. All is good. Being aware out there, okay? How much are you overthinking versus actually just being able to stay present and enjoy what's going on inside? How much are, even beyond that, you escaping yourself? If you audit your day, by the way, the amount of escapism is just insane, right? And by the way, can we actually make it where you could cut and paste some of these little chunks here and put them onto the screen? Okay. Even if it's messy, guys, we have, put this, we, have, we have this whole like mentoring set up here and it's gonna be a bit messy, not as pro as we'd always like, but we're trying our best here. 
we're gonna literally just have our guy here, Ibrahim. He's gonna actually cut and paste some of this right onto the screen so that you can see it. Are you actually able to cut and paste it on the screen? I could type it out. I can't cut and paste. Oh, you can't cut and paste? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll have to work on that. Okay. Well, if you had to cut, if you had to type the whole thing, I don't necessarily need you to do that. But Imagine maybe some of it. Cut and paste. Imagine you had the perfect system now, and you just cut and paste this into the thing, right? Maybe we'll, we'll work on that. Actually, I've never tried to quite do that before. But yeah, so see if you see if you can either cut and paste it. If you can't, I don't need you to type it all. But you know, you know what we can do after the after this is over, we could uh, post this in the notes in the comments. Yeah. How about that? So we'll post this right in the notes in the comments so that you can actually see the list as well. Yeah. Okay. And for now, we'll read it out to you. Next one. How much do you feel in a flow? Don't panic. Right? right? Versus uh, choppy versus, you know what? Everything's just fun, flow, it's light versus heavy, right? Even if you think of a live like this, if we were in our heads micromanaging everything, it couldn't just flow like that. It'd be like, so, and then the next point um, is versus, oh, you know what? Next point, are you in a flow? Ah, joke around, Tom Brady, that wouldn't happen. Okay, you can also, by the way, this whole imagine you had everything, think of if you ever went out and socialized or hanging out with friends or someone you just really get along with, that time where things just click and ah, you're quote unquote in state, what that feels like, okay? What's different there versus being out of state? And the key is, if you work on the being, you can always be in state, okay? Um, really what that feels like. Beyond that too, okay, how does this affect your physiology? What does your eye contact look like? It's very different where, you know, there's that saying, like the eyes are the, the windows into someone's soul, right? You can tell just looking right into someone, whether they're retreating, whether they're trying to think, oh, what am I gonna say? Is what I'm saying good enough? Whether they're very just present, whether they're calm, whether they're nervous. You can even see like the little, kind of looking to the side, oh, I don't know about this, versus, hey, just staying right there, right with it. Okay, how would your eye contact change? People can tell. Okay, once more, you see the soul. Okay, what does your voice sound like? The projection, right? The cadence, the tone. If you had everything, if you're doing everything perfect, what would your voice sound like? Right, even just walking up like, hey, excuse me. Um, ex excuse me, I'm sorry to be a burden. Excuse, excuse me, how's it going? Right, are you able to actually just burst out like that? You can try it. You're watching this video now. See if you can burst out. See if you can say, excuse me, excuse me, or um, excuse me, or, or if it's forced, excuse me. That's where you can tell, by the way, the doing, right? It's like, it's kind of this like forced ah, versus just this powerful release of energy, right? What are, what are some of the, sorry, what are some of the physical manifest, man <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the physical manifestations that you have where you're trying too hard, like me stammering there, what are some of the physical manifestations that you have when you're trying too hard mm. that would get, that mess you up? So what are some of the things that you do when you want it a little too much? You feel like you need to do it to, mm. you know, in order to be this better version. What are some of those things? Write it down, we'll even read a little bit of that. Yeah, you can okay. temporarily open your eyes, okay? And out of all the things you heard so far, what's the one that just, <laughs> hit you the most, clicked with you the most. You're like, oh, oh, I could totally feel that one. Oh, that's totally me, right? Again, loudness, power force, trying for a poor, excuse, excuse me, excuse me? Okay, breaking rapport, hey, excuse me. Still with a smile, okay? How about your body language? Are you <gasps> tense, nervous? Are you trying to not take up that much room, that much space? Okay, this is a huge one. And again, we're, I'm gonna read the comments in a second here. Um, taking up physical space, feeling comfortable. And it doesn't mean being over the top like, like that, but no, are you comfortable taking up physical space, volume, and energetical space, right? And I know that sounds a little wacky, but just like being able to project your vibe out there and feeling comfortable. Like, you know what, this is value versus I'm sorry once more to be a burden, okay? Um, someone's saying here, nervous laughter. Oh yeah, just the laugh, right? Or can you even laugh? Some people are so in that retreated, like I'm not good enough, that they can't laugh or their laughter is kind of forced or they don't even get humor. They'll see people laughing, vibing, having fun, and they just can't connect, right? Someone's like holding my breath, um, stifled, yep. Uh, body language, mm-hmm. Some other ones, trying for a portionality, laughing uncontrollably, yep. Too energetical. Now that's a funny one too, right? You'd think, oh, if you're just loud and energetical, that's great. Uh-uh-uh, depends the being behind it. Okay, subtle difference. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Very different. 
good eye contact. You know, people yeah. can't see some of your voice is actually improved. My voice has <laughs> always been amazing. You got it, like, it's like, like that. You it's smooth. Get, it's, you guys don't get ugh. it that, like, the neighbors can hear this, but it's capped. I've had it where I'm like, I'm so loud. It's like a shotgun through the candid. I'm like, you know it all, how loud this is. And then, like, I'd see the video later. It just looks like I'm like, rrr, rrr. It's like, you know how loud yeah. it is? Yeah. Whatever you hear right now, imagine 10x, 20x, 30x. That's what it really is. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so guys, you, the point that we're trying to get here, this is where we're going with this, is that you got to imagine that you had everything, that you have everything perfect, you're doing everything perfect. How would you act is the main way to get out of it, okay? How much are you in a flow? Do an audit of this. Anxiety, are you in and out of your head? Are you judging yourself constantly or are you just expressing? These are huge things. Go down the list a little bit for us here. We wrote this out. Eye contact, vocal tone, projection, cadence, tone, rapport seeking or breaking, body language. Another one is this. Do a careful audit of how you respond to stimulus. Remember we said a lot of this comes in your focus, right? You have beliefs, which then goes to your focus. How much do you feel like you're being judged? How much do you feel like you're being teased? How does a rejection feel socially if an interaction doesn't go well? How much is your selective focus, your RAS, reticular activation system, focus on how other people are responding, which is a good thing to be aware of how you're making them feel, but is your sense of validation going up and down, your sense of loving yourself going up and down? How much does your emotional system change based on their loving you or not loving you? How much are you able to be consciously aware of the responses because you're out of your head or do you not care because you're centered in yourself? Does your emotional system feel centered or constantly being pulled out by stimulus? Here's the way that it works. You have your belief system. Your belief system changes your focus. Your focus changes your physiology. Your physiology changes the self-fulfilling prophecies that occur from all of this. Those self-fulfilling prophecies change your reference experiences, which then reinforces your beliefs. With this little loop that's happening, you get around people because your vibe attracts your tribe, people like you, and then you get around people that reinforce that belief set in a silo. That can be better, that can be worse. It's actually one of the great problems in social media. You get people into some kind of bad or horrendous, nefarious silo, they can get a lot of bad ideas. Instead, you want to be in a positive and uplifting and inclusive silo where you feel great about yourself. So the point we're trying to get at here is this. Let's look at it closely. You don't you don't believe what you see. That's number one. You do not believe what you see. You probably think that you're very objective. You're like, I see the thing, I see it, and then I believe it. I see it, but I believe it. But in reality, think of all these court cases where different people have a different opinion. Think about, in, I just watched the Super Bowl tonight, Tom Brady for the win. Every single time that say, you know, some rusher is riding up the field, and then he gets a call against him. He runs back to the referee. He's like, what? No, no. LeBron James, some people would say the best basketball in the world, um, world right at this moment. You know, every time he doesn't get a call his, his way, he's like, what? No. And sometimes he's right. But sometimes they go and they, they, they show the replay and LeBron's wrong. But in his mind, he thinks he's right. Why? Because he believes he's in the right. So that's how he sees it. You can see it in sports. You can see it in litigation. You can see it in differences of opinion. You can see it in the political spectrum. You can see it everywhere. You think that you believe what you see. Ah, wrong. Not true. You see what you believe. You see what you believe. You think you believe. You think you believe what you see. I see it, but I believe it, right? Cause I'm smart. I can trust myself, you know? I mean, I'm crushing it in love right now. I couldn't be wrong about anything. I just see it and I believe it. No, no. Instead, what happens is that you believe something and then you just focus on it. Your RAS, reticular activation system. Look this up online. There's something called the white black gorilla experiment. Look that up, okay? The, the white black basketball experiment. Look at the comments underneath it. Your brain is always seeing what you believe. So what happens, you have your belief system. You're amazing, you're enough. Or you think, I'm not enough. Ah, oh, I'm not enough. I suck and I don't have the things. I wish I had been born as a prince. I wish I had been born as a Kardashian, but no, I'm born as little me with my bald head and I look like a garden gnome. 
Yeah, Julian was born with the cape on, and we just don't know what to do. And now everything sucks so bad. Everything is sucking, and then I wasn't born with the things. So I gotta do something about it now, now. <laughs> okay, and so instead what happens, okay, is so, so you, you believe this, and you focus on it, now guess what happens? Anytime that you meet someone, they don't like you. I knew it, I knew it. I knew I'm not enough. Look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. Now look at Tom Brady with Giselle. I ain't Tom Brady. Look at that, I'm me. I am not enough. I will never be enough. So I'm a victim. And you know what? I'm gonna eat my own snot now. I'm gonna chew, I'm gonna chew my own snot. That's what people do. That's what people do. That's me. I don't just eat my snot. Ah. Next media fiasco. Did, did, you, did you actually eat? I wish I had some. I would do it for the video. I just spit down myself. Yeah. Anything for the video. Yeah, this is for sure the next media thing. Like, here's what they teach. <laughs> here's what they teach. This was a joke. It was a bad attempt at humor. Nobody thought this was funny. Everybody thought it was serious. Nobody has any sense of humor because everyone's infantile. Everyone is dumb and can't take a joke. And it's infantile. There's no joking. There's just infantile, low-functioning morons who don't know what a joke is. Okay, so... I probably hit the field an extra decade longer than I should have, and I'm good at pumping out stimulus with competing in a stimulus environment. There's a great DJ there. I can still hold stimulus. Ask Julian. Now, getting back on it. So now that I've eaten my own snot and spit over myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the mindset of the having, the have or have not. I'm doing this as a teaching tool to anchor you. I'm trying to anchor you to, um, you know, to how stupid that is. Okay, so it's a teaching tool. <laughs> We will do anything for our clients. By the way, when you see how much we will go, I will eat my own snot for my clients. Earlier today, Julian just took a crap. He took it out. He just started eating it. And he said that it would help him relate to the clients more. <laughs> and that's the point we're trying to make here. Go to julianmentoring.com because we will do anything for our clients. julianmentoring.com has an amazing free call that we do. And we made a free call because we will, do, we will eat our snots if that's what it takes, okay, for you. Okay, we're committed, we're dedicated. We make free videos, we love you, we wanna talk to you. Go to julianmentoring.com now, 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 now. Okay, if I can eat my snot, you can go to julianmentoring.com now, okay? And if you need me to eat one more, I might do it because I liked it, <laughs> okay? Now, I and Julian see with a the turn. I more comments popping up right now. <laughs> Just more, more, more. <laughs> If we get 20, 30 more comments, <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> we just like it. Okay, now, that is a teaching method. It's called the have, okay, if you like the style of teaching, like to be a little bit off the wall, be very candid. Basically what we do is we say, we want to anchor the have or have not paradigm to basically just eating your own snot and, and logs of turds. It is stupid, it's not helping you. So then what happens, you're like, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. I gotta do something. And what happens is that all these cool jokes that you do and funny things that you do and all that kind of stuff, that gets messed up because people can tell you need it. They can tell that at its core, anything that you're doing that would be really cool is you being desperate. It's you self-qualifying. The th even something like teasing someone and pushing them away comes across as self-qualifying. It comes across that, that, that you don't feel good in your body. Your body doesn't feel good. And so you want approval because your winner effect is down, your state is down, your confidence is down, you're rotting from the inside, you're garbage on the inside, you're trash on the inside. I get more clickbait for the, like, then they told them this. Then they, then they said they're bad, okay? It's a joke, we're joking here. Now, going from there, then what you have, okay, you get less of this humor these days because of all this crazy stuff, but you see the main, main point. So then what you have is you realize that all your funny stuff, all the money you make, everything, it just comes across as an advanced form of supplication. And so it takes away the power. And here's what happens. So now you go out, you're doing, right? And you're like, well, when I, when I take someone on my private jet to the Maldives, they talk to me. Or maybe I go to like a poker game and there's like cool people there and they talk to me. But as soon as I'm not spending money on them, and as soon as I'm not making them laugh, and as soon as I'm not taking the Maldives, they don't like me anymore because I am flawed. I am a dark little piece of crap that eats my snot. And you're thinking that, no. No, no, 
Instead, we want to move into the being paradigm. We want to have it where you're enough. This is going to be quite hard for you to follow, but if somebody did this, I would not want to follow. Yeah. How do you like, so anyway, yeah. Like, let, let me get this thought ready. Yeah. <laughs> just starts jamming. He like, just starts pumping it down. So, okay, so you see the main point. <laughs> You see, and yesterday we're like, don't be the class clown. But anyway, okay, so you see the main point here, which is that it, it colors, the doing is colored with insecurity. So you wanna come from the, and, and by the way, the problem is when you don't feel like that person, there's changes in your physiology. Maybe you're taking some of the Maldives, but the eye contact is weird, the joking is weird, the body language is off, you're not as fluid, you're not able to free associate, you're not able to just let go and talk and have a little bit of fun. When your winter effect is up, Here's why that happens. A, you have good beliefs about yourself, that you, the, you are enough, really the being. You believe it. Then you focus on good things about yourself. You don't just focus on the negative. Then your physiology changes. What are we listing down here? What we're listing down here is changes that occur in your physiology. There's changes that occur in your physiology. Now, by the way, that's what we're trying to show you right now. As you can feel changes occurring in your physiology, what is it that winds up happening? All of a sudden, your body feels good and then your mind starts to open up a little bit. Look, if you wanna do something simple right now to just make your, yourself feel good, try investing in yourself and your future. That's why we tell you, go to julianmentoring.com now and as an experiment, as literally as an experiment, go to julianmentoring.com right now, set up that call, and notice how when you do, you're like, wow, instead of me just derping on TikTok or listening to mumble rap and autotune rap, I'm actually, okay, that's, that's the only other thing you could be doing. What I'm doing instead is I'm going to julianmentoring.com, filling out a simple quick form, and when I do that, I go, wow, they gave me a free thing, I went and I did it, and I show that I actually did something good for myself. It's about keeping promises to yourself, integrity to yourself. Hop right now, julianmentoring.com, great phone call, get on there, take the call, we're gonna love you, you're gonna love yourself, you're gonna feel good, watch. Watch the simple change in your physiology just when you follow that form. Now going from there, what's gonna happen is when you feel good about yourself, there's that cycle we talked about. First it goes beliefs, are you enough? Then it goes your focus, are you focusing on the negative or are you focusing on the positive? Then it goes in your physiology, your subcommunication changes, you change, you become more talkative, you believe in your dumb little jokes or whatever it is, right? Then all of a sudden that starts creating self-fulfilling prophecies. That original belief that you had changed your focus, changed your physiology, your subcommunication, and it started putting you into upward spiral of self-fulfilling prophecies. Well, then what happens? Then you get better. What's the next one? What's the next one? RE, what's the next one? RE, reference experiences. You start getting better reference experiences. So now all of a sudden the self-fulfilling prophecy becomes real. The self-fulfilling prophecy is real. That's what you want. You want the self-fulfilling prophecy to become real and then you have more reference experience and you start to believe, you start to reinforce those initial good beliefs. So we wanna consciously curate your beliefs and then the changes in everything start to occur. This is why Julian emphasizes in letting go of trauma because what happens is that when you let go of trauma, you're not resonating with these negative crappy beliefs because you feel good. You're feeling good, you're getting around better people, your beliefs are changing. The core of all of that is releasing trauma. The end result is that you start, because your vibe attracts your tribe, as you move up, you get around better people. You get better people in your life that'll reinforce those beliefs because your vibe attracts your tribe and you resonate with other people like that. But the fundamental of all of it to initiate that five start process, that five part process is releasing trauma. And we had clients for years and we would try to teach them the doing and they definitely got great results, but we wanna go deeper. We're always advancing and expanding. And so to help you not to just do something better, we wanna get at that foundation and get you what's called a deep identity level change. And the cool part about all this, by the way, is that it makes you happier. Yeah, you know, you got out maybe to get better social skills, maybe to, maybe to make more money, maybe to be more effective, but that's great. But in the process, you become happier. And because at its core, you get to be at the cause and not the effect of your emotions. I've lost friends to suicide, why is that? In my opinion, it's just an opinion, doesn't mean that I'm right, I'm not a doctor, but in my personal opinion, it's just, this will sound very diminishing, but I feel that they just don't have say control. I grew up suicidally depressed, literally on the verge of killing myself daily. And everybody's different, I'm not a doctor, get medical help if you have that, I'm not the guy. But what I personally found in my experience individually as an anecdote was that when I worked on my trauma and I worked on actually managing my own state and being at the cause of my state and not the effect of my state, my life got so much better. But then funny enough, here's funny, I shot higher. I didn't just say, oh, I just wanna be happy. You know, people say that, right? They're like, oh, just be happy. But instead what I said was, no, I wanna use being happy as a foundation 
to make more money, to meet more people, to have a better social life, to go do more things, to travel more, to have more friends, to be more special. And so I, I had a greater goal and that goal didn't frustrate me that I couldn't get to it. Rather that goal pushed me from behind, right? We, want, we don't want the big goal to intimidate you like a wall from the front that you're intimidated to break through it. Instead, you want that big goal, that pressure to push you from behind and drive you. And if it can drive you, your life can be so amazing, can be such a transformation. It starts now though, okay? It starts now by making a commitment in this video, write down right now, I'm committed. Just write this down in the comments, say, I'm committed. Write it down, say, I am committed. I'm committed to change. I'm committed to living the life that I want. I'm committed to living the life of my dreams. I want this, I've gotta do this. I need to do this. This is gonna happen. This is pushing me from behind. I'm not afraid, I'm gonna do it. Say, I'm committed to change, write that down. As you're committed to that change, by the way, if you're just logging on, there's a great thing you can do to kickstart that process and get around people that help hold you accountable. Type in julianmentoring.com. And if you type in julianmentoring.com right now, fill out a quick form, they actually do a quick consult call with you and get you even thinking more so about that. So if you're committed, in my view, what are the first things that you can do now? And if you put it off, man, that is so bad. And you do it now, you'll feel good. You show you have integrity to yourself. Go to julianmentoring.com, fill out that form, I'm so, so excited for you to do that. It's gonna be such a great, great thing for you to do because you're showing that you're actually taking action for yourself. It's something simple that you can do right now. Do the call. It's gonna show you something very powerful about yourself if you're kind of kind of trying to kickstart that momentum. It's a great quick momentum builder. Hmm. Well. <clears throat> Pick your snot. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me take it down a notch. And don't tell me you pick the snot. Let me take the fun down a bit, the excitement down, and let's, let's bring it way down. Um, and let me reiterate a few things. This is why you hear, by the way, happiness is the starting point, not the end goal. Okay, remember, most people do to have in order to be, in order to be happy. Wrong. You start with the happiness, the fulfillment, then you do, then you have, and that colors everything. Okay, and I'm gonna give a couple of examples of how this five-step process really works. Okay, so let's just say you have that belief, I'm not good enough, right? You're the little snot-eating troll or whatever. That's you, okay? That's the belief you have, that's the identity you have. Now, once more, what does that do? It hijacks your RAS, your selective focus. Okay, we have this. If you look around you, there's just too much information to take in, so you're going to filter out information and only lock in on what has value to you or what is aligned with what you believe and who you believe you are, what you believe you deserve. Okay, if you wanna test this, by the way, close your eyes right now, actually close your eyes, and if I asked you what is red around you right now, open your eyes, and immediately when looking around, you're gonna start locking in on red, 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 looking for red, because red has value. So if you have that belief, I'm not good enough, and this happens out of your awareness, it's, very, it's unconscious, you're gonna be going through life looking for proof and filtering reality through this lens, like as glasses, that I'm not good enough. And you're gonna look for references, okay? So again, you don't, let's just say, believe what you see, you see what you believe. Um, right now, another example, right? We're all in the same physical world, but we live in different realities. You might be watching this and let's just say you're very angry, that hijacks your focus and you start focusing on things that make you mad. If you're in a state of fear, that hijacks your focus and you start looking for things that <gasps> scary, 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 okay? This also affects your physiology. So let's just take a social interaction, okay? I've seen this for years. I have, for example, a client who wants to work on his social skills. I'm like, hey, you know what? Go uh, say hi to that person. Now, because they have that belief, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, and they filter the world through that, they're gonna see someone, and instead of being, you know what, everyone's on my side, we're in this collaborative state frame, this is great, uh, they see here's a scary being. That's what they see. Here's a scary being who's not gonna like little snot eating me. Now, what does that do? Okay, that's their perception. Again, the belief hijacks the focus, then it affects how they feel, their physiology, micro, communication, micro sub communications. And when they go up, are they going to be confident? Are they going to be loud? Are they going to be flowing? No, they're going to be very stifled. They'll be like, Oh, hello, scary being freaking out. And what's going to happen then? Are they going to basically be like, Oh, great. Here's someone who's amazing. No, they're going to be like, uh, 
they're going to have a bad reaction, like, you know, get away from me, little golem troll. And then what's that going to do? That reference, okay, creates that self-fulfilling prophecy. Then you have the bad reference, which reinforces that belief, and I people knew, are stuck. I knew I didn't have the things yeah. I needed. I knew it. And this ah. is also why, crucial, letting go is the way. Key, okay? I've said this for years. There's no such thing as a bad reference experience. A reference experience is neutral, right? What happens is neutral. The only bad thing is your interpretation of that reference experience, where two people could go through the exact same experience, but because of the beliefs, this whole system we broke down for you, one person will interpret it in a beneficial way and move up, and another will interpret it in a harmful way and move down. Okay, it's not the actual experience, it's how that hijacks your focus, your physiology, you manifest it, and it's reinforcing. And this is also why you can give someone all the money in the world, they don't feel like they're good enough. You can give someone the good results. Like you think if you get enough good references, that's gonna change how you feel about yourself? No, because you won't even see it. Your mind will distort it to reinforce where you think you currently at, and it will keep you stuck. And this is why people stay stuck no matter what they have and no matter what they do. You have to attack the being. You start there, and when you do, that affects the entire process. Okay, another example of this, by the way, there was a client I had years ago. Okay, this was in Amsterdam. And we went out, and he was talking to people, and people loved this guy. Okay, loved him. And at the end, we were just choking, like, you know, that was a great time out. And he was like, what are you talking about? It wasn't. And everyone just was shocked, like, what do you mean it wasn't? He's like, no one liked me. We're like, what? Everyone did. He's like, no one did. I knew it. I'm just going to go home and eat my snot. That's the way. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to keep bringing that up. Munching. Right? And no joke, we literally had to take pictures, pictures of the people smiling at him and show him, like, look, see the pictures? And even then, it took him a second. Like, you couldn't really deny. He was like, this is Photoshop. No, he wasn't like that. But he was like, he just couldn't let it land. Why? hijacks your focus, tunes out anything that isn't aligned with what you believe. Yeah, guys, th this, ladies and gentlemen, and all in between, this is something that we had to manage on program for years. Like this was this, you would, ha you'd have guys that would come and you could tell that their beliefs were skewed and we could show them a demonstration of something really, really powerful. And they were just blind to it. And, you know, we would work for years to be able to demonstrate something really compelling and inspiring. And we'd go demonstrate this. And then they just couldn't see it sometimes. And, you know, it would get to the point that we, like we said, like snap some photos or things like that to try to show like, Hey, could you look at this or, you know, break out the instant replay and be like, Hey, could you, could you look at this for a second? And they're like, Oh, yeah. oh like that, because what's happened is that at a, uh, at a, the brain gets addicted to emotions and okay. I'll do very quick explanation here. The brain gets addicted to emotions and emotions. Some people would say, I don't know this for a fact, but some people would say emotions are more addicted than hair, more addicted than heroin. Okay. So your body gets addicted on certain emotions. Like even though you're not like high, like a heroin junkie or heroin user, you're, you're still addicted to those emotions. Okay. That's why you think about your friends, right? You probably know roughly what they're going to look like mood wise day to day. So what happens though, is that imagine that a heroin user, someone addicted to heroin, in, imagine if they could just press a button. Ima imagine if a heroin user could just press a button, like the way that I can, the way that I can drink this or the way that a uh, insecure guy eats a snot or something like that, right? Imagine you could just press a button and you could just get heroin. Well, how often would the heroin junkie keep pressing the button? Okay, think about this for a minute. Please think about this. And I'm not trying to diminish anyone that, that is stuck on heroin. Uh, it's actually very sad. Now, let's go a little bit deeper here. Imagine if a heroin addict, I like how this is like, <laughs> imagine if a heroin addict um, could just have a thought and unleash heroin. Think about this for a minute. Imagine if a, imagine if a heroin addict could just have a thought and it would let, unleash heroin. Well, what would eventually probably happen, if you think about it, is that they're thinking, like the addiction would just take over their mind and they would just start compulsively having thoughts that would unleash heroin. And to the point that there's no conscious proactive will. Please don't sleep on that last thing I said. Please don't sleep on the last thing that I said. There's no conscious proactive will anymore and the emotional addiction is running you like a junkie. 
And I've seen many, many friends like this. This is why we're very, 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 very passionate about this material. I've seen friends that they get so addicted to negativity that that addiction takes over their brain and they think they're having the thoughts and all they can see is negativity. So if you don't think that you're good enough, say socially, and you're addicted to the emotional payoff that you're getting from that, that you're for your body to try to maintain homeostasis, it's trying to keep certain chemicals. And then we're trying to raise you up. We're like, hey, we're trying to raise you up a little bit. And we're going, you know, we're almost taking you out of your comfort zone in your, in your kind of biochemical system, so to speak, right? Your neurology, the hormones and chemicals and the emotional soup that your body's addicted to, your brain may not be able to see it. Conversely, when you're coming from a position of strength, because you've let go of trauma and you let that go, and now all of a sudden there's a conscious will, there's something awake in you. When that happens, all of a sudden, you can chart your own course. Also, you can see the world more objectively. Maybe you even see the world better than objectively. And what happens is you start initiating self-fulfilling prophecies. This is and why, this is why way, it's so important. I mean, I too. This is also, by the way, how you stop being affected what people think of you. And like, oh, they didn't like me or rejections and so on and so forth. Because you're addicted to, I'm good enough. I'm worthy. Okay, it's... On both sides, someone's like, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. Something would happen, it's still, I'm not good enough, versus I am good enough, I'm amazing. There is no other way. You want to have that, oh, I stop caring what people think, oh, whatever, you gotta change the being, okay? And another example, by the way, to explain this whole emotional addiction, just on a smaller scale, is think of, say you just get really mad right now. Say you find out something, and you're just riled up, and you're like, I can't believe this, you're freaking out, and then you find out, let's just say, that the reason you're upset is actually false. You know, some, let's just say some fake news. And you're like, what, there's no reason to be mad? Are you just gonna shift out of it like that? Like you're screaming, you're hitting, you're saying, oh God, why is this happening? You find out it's wrong. Are you just gonna be like, oh, ha, great, and just move on? No, 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 it has a momentum. It has a life of its own, okay? You felt it on a micro level. It's still there and you're like, no, but, but still, but still, and you're gonna start looping on other things that make you mad. That there, could just happen in like a minute. Imagine on a deeper level how that's been happening your entire life. And this is why it's so key to learn how to let go, identify the unconscious programming that runs you, letting go of past trauma, which once more, I teach in the mentoring, so definitely jump on the free call, okay? Go to julianmentoring.com, jump on that free call, because otherwise, you really cannot escape. And you'll see it, just like someone who's mad, when I showed, for example, the guy the picture, she's like, uh, uh, but still, and then usually excuses come in. Well. It's because of this, something that just diminishes it. Like, he can't let it land. It's like, well, they smiled because, you know, the, the, there was the camera taking the picture. They smiled for the camera. It wasn't me. It's like, no, it was you. No, it's the camera. Just, and I'm like, why are you not letting this land? Why? On a deeper level, addiction to I'm not good enough. This is where I am. Okay, this is really your comfort zone at a deep, deep level, by the way. This also causes massive, massive self-sabotage, as we explained. With the not letting it land thing, we all, part of how we got into this was we'd be teaching every weekend, and we'd go crush it, and we could see someone not letting it land, and so we became confused, because you, you could have this, like, such a gangster program, like, it looks so good. Like, it was so good. Like, you know, it, it'd be like, I don't know, like, you know, think of, like, the best rap or rock album you heard in your life, and, like, you, you know, you just heard it and like, you know, all 15 tracks were amazing. And like, at the end of it, you're like, God, that was powerful. Or like, you're the most powerful movie you've ever seen. You're like, God, that was amazing. And like, we would put, we would get every inch of our soul mm. to try to like make this incredible program. And you know, most of the people there were like loving it in tears. You're up at 5 a.m. like crying in each other's arms. Like, God, this was so transforming. You're never gonna be the same, oh my God. You know, and then like, there's like this one guy in the corner who's like, no. No. <laughs> and you're like, how do I help you? How do I help you? I'm committed. Just what do I need to do? And we started backwards engineer, but what we found when we backwards engineered is like, yes, there might be more extreme cases and people that are really struggling is more obvious, but everybody's struggling. Everybody, you, you, you are struggling and get addicted. Maybe we even show you something that could raise your status. Like again, Julian mentoring and filling out a simple form, but your brain goes, wait, no, 
No, I can't raise my status. I won't get my, my, oh, my heroin. And that's what we began to realize. But then what happened was when we took that basic level insight from years of teaching, almost every single week, got around the world, hundreds of thousands of people face to face, millions online, 265 cities, 75 countries around the world. And we taught this. And here's what we saw, wait a minute. Yes, you could use this to help somebody who's really struggling, but you can also use it to help someone who's coping, to generally coping, to move into generally thriving. Or you could take someone who's generally thriving and move them into a point where they are crushing it. And then we started teaching this to people that were making millions and showed them how to make tens of millions or hundreds of millions. And at any level you can think, you can win. That's why we push you to go into Julie mentoring because we know inside yourself, you're like, wait a sec, oh, the hair went, no, no, enough, enough. Say it now, today is enough, no more. Today is the day that you win and you do a small, simple win for yourself, julianmentoring.com, fill out the form and do a quick call and show yourself you can have integrity to yourself and show yourself that you have that intention to begin to move up. The cool thing too about it, by the way, is not only will you learn how to let go and fix this, but guess what? This is where it gets really cool, okay? You work on the being by letting go, but you can hit it from both angles, right? You can double team the being, if you will, where on one hand you're letting go, but on the other hand, you're surrounding yourself with people who have those beliefs already, who have the being handled, and guess what? The being rubs off on the being. Okay, you can write that down. The being rubs off on the being. Meaning, if you're around someone who has that high self-esteem, just through osmosis, it's gonna transfer onto you. Okay, and this is also why it's much more beneficial to invest in surrounding yourself with the right people than to invest in having certain things or doing certain things. Okay, and you'll see this in the mainstream and self-help. Everyone's like, well, if I just invest and I bought this uh, certain uh, piece of attire, then it would change the being. Nope. If I just invest and move and do go to this different place, then I'll be, you know, good enough. No. If I just um, invest and maybe just take a lot more action, invest in this thing that allows me to do more action, no. But if you invest in surrounding yourself with the right people and that affects the being directly, it is much more beneficial and you're gonna see your results skyrocket. And that's the great thing with the mentoring is you learn how to let go and you surround yourself with the right people. Yeah, guys, too. The social skills that we got from this are so crazy. Like, funny enough, so part of why I'm kind of popping off even extra today, so normally I do the live by myself, and I got to energy manage that for about an hour, but with you taking little breaks in between, I can wrap up energy, that I'm like, ah! So it's kind of fun. You know, I'm taking advantage of having a year. But, you know, so that's kind of why I'm doing that. But notice that both Julie and I can sit here, we can riff, we can just come up with stuff off, they call that off the dome, right? Guys like Jay-Z, the best rappers in the world, can just rap off the dome. Good to, to write your raps too, but you see the point. So what we're trying to show you here is both something that will make you happier, something that will get you at the right core, something that will be a trajectory for you in the right direction, but also something that is very, very, very powerful for social skills, both because like we said, whatever social skills you do put out will be coming from the right place and will be interpreted in a more positive way, but also it frees you up energetically. Your voice can get louder. Mm -hmm. You can become more free associative. Your speaking can become sharper and punchier. For us to go to the next level in our speaking, we had to learn this stuff. And for us to go to the next level in social skills and social results, we had to learn this stuff. So that's why we're trying to hammer you with this being aspect. And again, we talked in great detail about the specific characteristics that you'd have if you just we're like, kind of to rewind here, we said, imagine that you had everything. Imagine, and imagine you had everything perfectly to your liking. Imagine that you were doing everything perfectly to your liking. Well, then how would you act? There'd be changes in your focus. There'd be changes in your physiology. You would behave different. Then that would kick in many self-fulfilling prophecies because you'd get better results. Then that would create better reference experience. It would further cement in your initial belief system. And then you'd start getting around better people because your vibe attracts your tribe. You would just start getting around better people who would further reinforce it. You wanna know a great way that you can do this yourself? A, start working on beliefs. B, work on your focus. C, work on your physiology. That starts getting some better self-fulfilling prophecies. Then emphasize those good reference experiences and start getting around better people. 
you will get around better people who will help you to reinforce the belief system and make it real. But I'll tell you this, masterminding, while one of the most powerful ways to cement the new belief system and start being another great way is mentoring. And if you can get a mentor who has had that transformation, can take you by the hand and guide you through that transformation, also can provide to you a mastermind group of lifelong friends and also hold all of each other accountable and also can transmit that paradigm to you. I hope that what we're trying to do by having a little bit of fun with you here is to transmit that paradigm to you also unconsciously or by osmosis because you become who you hang out with, you take on their paradigms unconsciously. So we're also trying to do kind of like a Zen teaching type transference of paradigms here, but in kind of like a fun kind of cocky way, you know, a little over the top and wacky, but you see the point. That's what we're trying to get through to you here. Earlier when we said go to julianmentoring.com, the reason why we're doing that is we want to begin to kickstart that process for you and get it to where you can begin to move up in that paradigm, get better social skills, become happier, and move into your being. So, what you waiting for? Why are you still here? Click it, get the being in check, and I guess to wrap it here, don't forget to comment below this video your biggest takeaway. Okay, there's two things. If you can't execute on these two things, uh, just go eat your snot. At least do that. Like, do us a favor and at least eat your snot. Not that we endorse that, but two things. Fill out the form, okay, and once more. I read through all of these myself, by the way. I can pull it up now, and I can just see, like, who actually submitted this. I read through every single application myself, okay? So let me know what you're dealing with. Go fill out the form, apply for the free call, and let me know. Okay, for example, yeah, I got like Manuel here. I got Matthias Oliveira. I have Victoria Heverling. I have Matthias, two Matthias's. Gamelgard, I have Michael Emmanuel. I have Noel Alfonso. I have uh, Tammy Hall, so once more. Go fill out the form. Okay, I'm gonna read through this right now. Fill out the form, julianmentoring.com. Just takes a few seconds. And once you filled it out, Okay, brace yourself for the free call. Take it seriously, by the way. Just because it's free doesn't mean like, oh, you know, come at the call with questions prepared. Okay, let us know what you're dealing with. If you have questions, watching this here, if you're watching it, you're like, you know what, I would just like more clarification on that. Ask us on the call. Okay, come at it seriously, take notes, lock in on that call. Okay, and lastly, below this video, right when we end it, below, not in the chat, in the comments, let us know your biggest takeaway. This helps you internalize everything you've heard and it helps us learn more about you and tailor content in a more personalized way to you. So I wanna see comments, biggest takeaway, I wanna see applications, and hopefully, you know, no snot eating anymore. <laughs> Enough snot, and, and here's what we'll do. If there's any questions about what you've been learning, ask them here, and by the way, for about five minutes, we're gonna do an Instagram after party. So go to the Julian himself Instagram. Here's what you gotta do. Follow Julian, okay, it's called Julian himself. J-U-L-I-E-N himself. Julian himself on Instagram. Go there now, and what we can do there that we're not able to do here is we're actually able to do a little bit of Q&A. So we're gonna hop on, me and Julian, and do a little bit of Q&A. When you hop onto the Instagram, the first thing you gotta do is follow Julian. Follow Julian on Instagram. Second thing you gotta do is click notifications to Julian. Then what we're gonna do is in about two minutes, we're gonna go live on Instagram and we're gonna have the split screen and we can actually answer questions. Any question you have is fantastic. So again, Instagram.com forward slash Julian himself, but you really should do that in the Instagram app. Yeah. So if you don't have the Instagram app, go and install, it takes two seconds. We're gonna hop on there and do split screen. It's the Instagram after party, follow Julian. You gotta follow him so you can see the live and then you gotta get a notification so that you can see the live. And we're actually gonna do a little bit of split screen, literally right through the phone, just like kinda, kinda like, you know, got, got this little phone set up right here, okay? And we're gonna hop on to uh, Julian's Instagram, Julian himself, Instagram. So go right now, J-U-L-I-E-N himself. We'll do the Instagram after party, okay? You remember that back in the day? After party, baby. After party on Instagram. Julian himself, Instagram. Follow Julian and click notification. All you gotta do is literally just open up your app, go to Julian himself, 
click notification and follow, and then you're gonna see it and we're gonna hop on here and we're actually gonna do a couple minutes of an after party answering questions. So literally all you gotta do right now is just go hop on, super duper easy, lot of fun. We're gonna actually keep the party going a little bit longer. This is kind of the main party. Now we're going for the after party, right? You know it goes down the after party, right? So we're gonna have a lot of fun. Instagram after party, Juliet himself on Instagram. J-U-L-I-E-N himself on Instagram. We're gonna hop on there in a sec. And we're gonna do the after party. You gotta follow Julian. Here's the main key. You gotta actually follow him and you gotta click notification and then hop on to Julian's Instagram. Now we'll be there in just a minute. And then you're gonna go on the Julian Instagram after party and we'll do a little bit of QA there to keep the party going. But again, you can't just get the after party here. You've gotta actually go to the Instagram after party. Julian himself, click follow and click notification. And then you're gonna see him over there, okay? So wrapping up, we're gonna see you on Instagram in just a sec. And by the way, as you're doing that, make sure that while you're looking through your phone, you're also here on Julian Mentoring and fill out that simple form and do the free consult call. You're gonna love the free consult call. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm so excited for you to do it. Make sure that you keep that integrity to yourself because what's gonna happen is if, if you forget to fill that out, you're gonna be like, oh, it was like this stupid thing I could have done and I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even do that. Conversely, what I want for you now as a part of being active in this is to go there and fill out that form so that you're active in this process saying, you know what, that sounded cool. I thought it sounded cool. I typed on the form, it seemed easy. I filled it out, I did a call. I learned something, it was a lot of fun. Maybe we'll even see you inside the mentoring as well. Love you very much, been a lot of fun to get back with the squad right here. We're gonna hop on Instagram right now. Love you, thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. This means the world to us. We love what we do. And we'll see you on Instagram. See you in a sec. Peace.